Okay. Let's see if I can figure out all my hardware I haven't used forever. But my programming software. Remember, I said there was a plug on the side. Well, I had this box here. It's like in a homemade adapter. I mean, this looks like just a regular Cat5 plug. But it's just going to a uh, in circuit serial programmer for. Uh, I have a couple of these. There's an extra one. Oh man, that's wedged down in there. I don't want to mess it up. There it is. I could drop certain ICs in there, but a lot of them you program in circuit serial programming. It's called. Kind of, which is that terminal there? So I just have stuff. Uh, I gotta make sure those aren't touching. Oh, look at that. That one's broke from taking that here. I gotta go fix that now. <laughs> Has USB or serial interface to the PC or laptop, and this is what programs the microchip microcontrollers. Okay, I just had to fix the uh, put a new connector on there, solder the wires to it, zip tied it down so I can shoehorn it back in this box. And, uh, so I'm gonna hook this back up real quick. Yeah, that's pretty much what I had it in the box here. I was just keeping this in here a while back when I was first testing this so I can reuse my laptop if I need to reprogram it, but I haven't had to change anything or I just haven't changed anything, so but I do need to reprogram it. I did start changing the program a while back, so let's see if this thing will still work. It just plugs in like that. The other end goes into the laptop. Let me open up the software. I gotta check this out because I haven't used it for a while. I gotta set it up. Okay, I think I got it worked out now. Let's open the program. Read. It's reading. Not giving me any errors now. I need to have the key on. Okay, there it is. So I'm gonna save that. There's my security controller. Yes, replace it. Okay, so now I read the EEPROM out. Oh, there's the date right there, May 10th, 2011. That's probably about right. I, repro I wrote, I changed the program a little bit. Here's my program. There's a little defines for my uh, four-bit LCD. See, it's lit up on there. Oh, defining all my variables, pulse width. So all position sensor, which is TPS. Button one and button two. Uh, sequence code. Those are just variables made for LA, LA LCD beat. Setting up the registers. Tri-state A, B, and C. In binary. Uh, first powers up. Some states that just puts uh, my variables in. But once it's it's always powered though unless you disconnect the battery or unplug it. Beginning of the program, just some stuff here basically goes through. If I have to try to remember what I was doing, check for ignition, power, looking at port, you know, drive mode. It just happens where it is. So it's looking at it whenever it comes back to the beginning, and then looking to see if port B.6 equals one, which would be five volts at that pin. Then ignition on, it's just another sequence. If not, then it's going to drive mode equals zero, and then changing states. And I have, don't remember exactly how everything, I have to look at my pro own program for a while, because as you see, it was May the last time I was messing with it. But I've made this about a year ago. There's a thing that it outputs, and the main loop, and there's my subroutines down here. Pull sensors, you know, different stuff. Code stuff, security off. Uh, once when I'm driving and it's enabled, then I have like my monitor plate switch. So this is where it goes once I'm driving. I've already entered the code. It's just in here looking for my uh, switch. Where here's where it activates. Uh, if delay, it's just delays its account, but it's basically pulse width is 255. I put full 12 volts to that servo back there. It drives my plate down. But only for a very brief time, you're talking just milliseconds, and then it starts ramping down. Then my pulse width output is that. 
which is uh, 255 is being 100% and 0, 0%. Half of 255, which would be like, what, 120 something? 128? Uh, 127, really, because 0. So 127 would be 50%. So I'm still over 50%. And then it goes down to very nil. It does that real quick, though, but it, it moves the plate. I kind of had to play with my adjustments. It's enough to move the plate, but not to slam it. A little different values for uh, bringing the plate up. It takes more power to bring the plate up. So, that. Plate status loop. You know, this is during the normal. It's just check going there just to check that, but that input, port A dot three. If it equals one, the plate's down. If not, the plate is up. Or if it's up, then it, yeah. If it's got five volts there, or 12, you know, 12 volts is converted to five. Um, then the plate is down. If not, it just goes here. It just tell, it's just updating the status on that screen. Real simple program. I was trying to remember as I go what I did. There's where the disable fuel pump, you know, in case somebody tries to drive off without putting in the code first. Check duration of boot button. So I changed some of this. I can't remember what I did, but hopefully it works. I'm going to try writing this to it. So let's go recompile. Okay, it's getting dark. I just got done spending, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 minutes going through all my program, finding all sorts of glitches. For instance, I had this command right here underneath this one, and it was stuck in it. It was never looking at it uh, or able to get out of the loop if I was holding the two buttons. I wanted to look for the two buttons to be held down at once. If I hold down it briefly, I wanted just to go back to a turn the security back on. If I push and hold it, I want it to go into valet mode. That way this thing stays in valet mode. Even when I take out the keys and take it, let's say, to Big O to get the tires worked on, they can go in, put the key in, start it up, drive it normal until I take it out of valet mode again. It stays that way. And then um, normally, you know, you, just, you have to put in a code before you can drive it or it's going to shut off fuel pumps and stuff. So uh, I have it, you know, I'm using analog inputs because we originally had in this, but they're digital buttons. It just grounds it makes the value low so zero is zero volts 255 is five volts so that's why I'm saying if you know look at them if the values are below that amount which is when I push them down both of them increment the sequence and go back and it's basically causing it to determine whether I held it short or long when I let off the buttons it's gonna go look and say uh, I'm gonna go down here but if I'm pushing hold it and it hits uh, 200 in the sequence, it's counting while I'm holding it. It's 200, it's going to jump right down to valley mode. If I push it and let go briefly, it's just going to go down, go to drive mode. It's taking it, turning security back on. So, pretty cool. So, basically, just load it into the programmer, set my fuses, which I already did. Uh, key is on, let's hit program. Ask me if I want to hit yes. That's programming. This gets done right and see programming ROM. That's the hex file that's going to it. When it gets done, this thing will let it go back and hold it again. So there we go. So see that TPS 31? There's where it's monitoring my throttle. I just barely touched the throttle. That's one of the inputs it's looking at. It knows. So I gotta turn the key back off. This is what happens if you try taking off. Turn it back on. Put in my code. One, two, three. The sequence in our normal mode. I push and hold this for more than briefly, see it goes into valet mode. Now, even if I turn the key off, it just stays there. So I'm going to go up and start it up. Go start it, it'll be fine. Push and hold the buttons again. There we go, back in normal mode. Push and hold this quickly, and it puts it back, turns the security on. Everything's working just how I want the program to. And just unplug this. Pretty cool setup.